Good morning and welcome to another Women in Influence talk. Today we have Sally Penny who is a barrister. Sally Penny is also a public speaker, a radio broadcaster, a diversity leader, a board leader, a proud mother of three and we are very lucky to have her here today. So our first question is what inspired you to become a barrister? Uh, well, firstly, thank you for inviting me on this um, prestigious series. I can see that we've got future leaders in whatever for the intents of the questions that are already we've already started with. Um, the, the things I suppose that inspired me to become a barrister were things like fairness. Uh, I always wanted the things to be fair, justice and for things to be equitable. So I'm interested in people being treated well in their workplace and people being paid properly and making sure that girls have the same rights as boys. And now I've got two boys and a daughter and so they should all be equal when they get a job. There's nothing wrong with that. And so I really like the idea of fighting for people's rights and making sure everyone has a right and also um, the idea that you could actually send people to prison if they do bad things. I quite like that and I like the idea of using the laws to do that. Um, so I was really inspired by that. Now my parents wanted me to be a dentist now. Very good. It's a very hard job but you have to look in people's mouths all the time. Actually it was a doctor. It was a doctor I forget and then my mum I think would have liked me to be a, a dentist but I knew I couldn't look at people's mouths all day. And also I was a bit scared of blood. So I changed my path very early on. And I used to read some books called Rumpole of the Bailey. And really they were about um, this man who was fighting in court for cases um, and defending rights and so on and so forth. But I was older when I read that. But originally I didn't know any lawyers. I didn't know um, anybody who worked in law really. But my inspiration was really making sure that there was equity and equality for people. And that's what really inspired me. And also fairness, even for animals. I think I just showed the girls my dog, but she's gone now. She's gone back downstairs. But th those sort of things, you know, environmental rights um, and uh, animal rights. And, and generally, those were the things that really inspired me. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think those are really good reasons. Thank you. So, did you always enjoy public speaking and law? Um, yeah, actually, yes, but I was quite shy. I wasn't, like, as confident as you guys are, are here interviewing me. Um, I did enjoy public speaking. Usually, I like to argue with my parents about pocket money, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. which isn't the same as public speaking. But I did like the idea of um, using words to try and persuade people and uh, whether it was for pocket money or trying to um, argue with my brother who was very good at drawing. So he used to get loads of money from people because he would just sketch them or sketch their cat and things. Whereas I was always working very hard. Um, so I did always enjoy public speaking or the opportunity to speak. Uh, and later on at university, I was heavily involved in mooting, in debating. Debating is like argue for one side of the argument and then you have to argue for the other side. So it's a bit like Brexit. I don't want to bring that up. But, you know, argue for Brexit and argue against Brexit, even if you're not, you know, for either side or what your parents think. Arguing, that's kind of what public speaking is. So I did enjoy that. I didn't, I was shy about speaking, say, in front of an assembly or something. But I did lots of things at school which helped that. So after school clubs, um, there was always like drama. I wasn't very good at singing, so I wasn't, but I was good at instruments. So they gave me an opportunity to be performing in front of people even though I wasn't always speaking, and that helped with my shyness and confidence on the stage. Yeah, I, I think a lot of girls will have that same problem and will work around it in different ways, like you said, with instruments. So, yes. uh, you, yeah, so you talked a bit about debating and after-school clubs, but what was your first experience of public speaking? 
oh gosh, I'm going back now. Um, now, I did think long and hard about this because there are so many, but one of my early ones were actually, was actually, I think, in sixth form, maybe younger. And, well, the earliest forms was making presentations in front of the class. You've got PowerPoint now, haven't you? We yeah. used to have whiteboards, yeah, and the sheets that you have to fold over and they kill your arm. So they were some of my early ones when you had to do a presentation in front of all, like, your classmates. And I was always a little bit like, oh. But if you, I was well prepared that I could get through it. If I was just sort of winging it, which means I hadn't prepared and I was just pretending to try and get through because I was nervous, don't do do that the best answer when you're feeling like that is make sure you're you know more than everybody in that room so then no one can catch you out and that is kind of your backstop so my first proper one was there uh, was a school and we designed some toys for blind children so children without sight and it was my idea you know so they could feel lots of different textures and so on but then we won a prize and we had to go to um somewhere in liverpool to present it was like dragon's den i don't know if any of you you were allowed to watch that yeah and uh and i had to you know present the idea to all these strangers and it was a nightmare i hadn't quite thought the people would be there but i always remembered um what i learned much later on is when you're a bit nervous again prepare so i was so prepared i, I remember that and then imagine everyone naked which is what i tell my children just imagine then there's something funny in the room or something somebody really funny is in the room and maybe they're not fully dressed or maybe they're lying on the floor dancing maybe it's your head teacher or mistress or a teacher that maybe is very strict if you imagine them then that way you can smile and then engage people so that was very scary because it was a real grown-up people but i really enjoyed the challenge so that was probably one of one of my first proper public speaking because uh, I had to really talk about the toys we had made and also pitch it so that perhaps a toy company might buy it or something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So I, I really, that's a really good idea. Yeah, it's such a great thing to give those opportunities to people who aren't as fortunate as us. So, yeah. yeah, yes, absolutely, absolutely. So you've already talked about being calm and being prepared, but if you could go back to your 17-year-old self, what would you say? Oh, wow, this is a hard question. Um, well, lots of things, really. I would say you've got this. Um, I think when I was younger, I was always sort of, you know, nervous, maybe anxious about everything. And I was always worrying. That's what it is. Now they call it anxiety. But um, I wasn't always like an anxious in that way. I was and I wasn't. But I was just like always worrying about everything. And I would say only worry about things that you could possibly change. So if you've got tests or exams and things, you know, so long as you've done your best and you've actually revised, then there's no point worrying about it. You'll do your best. Yeah. So that would be one of the things that I would say back to my 17 year old self. I would also say you've got this. You have to have a kind of self belief and confidence, especially because we are all girls. Um, you know, when I look at sort of the boys and like my middle son is like very sporting and he's just like so confident with himself. And yet my little one my daughter is probably not so you know she's a bit younger than you guys and nephews and cousins i would say remember you know you've got this you're great and you can do this and that's 17 so i'm almost 18 when i'm i'm talking to my my younger self um and then the final thing i would say to my younger self is actually um just have more fun enjoy being with your friends yeah sometimes it works so hard that um we actually forget to have fun and laugh about things because actually they're the times that we have um, memories and they're the things that when you get to my age you'll be looking back and saying oh yes I remember this and that and this so yeah if I if I could look back I would say those three things especially the latter one have more fun um and you know worry less and that's for parents to worry but and just yeah keep going and you've got this that's that's a really good way to I mean, reflect on your past. It's a nice way to think about it. Yeah. So, yeah. So what 
Um, so we've read that you were awarded an MBE. So what was your first impression when you got awarded it? Well, um, this is a long story, but I'll try and keep it short. Um, firstly, I, I was looking for some evidence um, in my work email, and which uh, we couldn't find anywhere. And the solicitor would say, I'm sure I've sent it to you. Um, and he hadn't sent it to me at all. Uh, so I was looking in my spam junk folder when I found this letter. And I thought, oh, no, it's a, probably a joke. So it said open this letter it didn't tell you in the email and it wasn't signed for emergency it looked like it was just because of covid it wasn't a formal letter so that's how i found out um so i i then opened his email and just thought it was obviously a joke and then just deleted it that was it um and then i got an i forgot all about it then i got another one um asking because the, you, there's a limit a time limit where you have to um accepted so anyway in answer to the question about reaction eventually i had to phone them to make sure it wasn't a joke because um all the things i do like speaking to girls like you older ones and younger ones and i have a podcast um where i'm interviewing a lot of women leaders in law uh, especially um to, to so other people can see so you can see visible role models because i didn't see those when i was young and when i was your age um I, do, I don't do those things for a reward or, or an award. I've won lots of awards. That's very nice. Thank you to people who nominate me or whatever. But, um, and I don't know who nominated me for my MBE, but um, I was just very, very shocked um, when uh, I received it. And I was kind of like, I was speechless. Uh, I couldn't speak. And then I, I had to phone my husband and say, uh, uh, this has come. Uh, uh, and he was like, oh my goodness, ah, ah, ah. Um, so then I was like, oh my, oh my. And then we had to not tell my children because they're blabber mouths and they would go to school and tell everyone. <laughs> You're not allowed to tell anybody. So I hope you two, uh, Athena and Imogen, would, would be, I should have told you, I'm sure you're better secret keepers of things like that. Um, so yes, I was just shocked. And of course, I was delighted. Um, and, uh, and I've never been to Buckingham Palace. So uh, I was really quite shocked. And I, was, I felt very proud because I felt that um, if I could receive an honour and be recognised for my work um, outside the courtroom and in the courtroom, and on diversity, then I, I felt that I could be a role model for younger people and especially younger girls um, as well, because we don't have enough mums in senior positions in society. And so I'm very keen to start early with younger people so that you are the future. You know, when I'm in a nursing home having a glass of wine, you will be, you know, leading the country and doing, being true leaders that you are, hopefully in law, but there are other sectors too. So yeah, I was really quite shocked and um, very surprised, but I'm very grateful to receive it. Yeah, so I guess good things, they are re rewarded, I guess. And yeah. 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 So the last question is, if you could say one thing to the guards at FHS, what would it be? Ooh, well, I'd like to say lots of things. It's a shame we're in COVID, isn't it? Because I think originally it was going to be in real life. Um, yeah. Well, I've seen, yeah. I've seen your school. It looks very nice. And you've got great uniform because I can see Athena's wearing hers um, just there. So there are a few things... Um, I think I would like to say to the girls at your school. Firstly, I'd like to say to you all that you can do whatever um, you set your heart on. And what I mean by that, I don't mean like, you know, going out or spending loads of money or whatever. You could do that. That's, you know, a job called being a buyer for Marks and Spencers or whatever. But you can um, do whatever you set your heart on. And I'd just say, don't limit yourselves to what you would like to do. And you can change your mind, you know? You can say, right, I want to be a dentist. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be this. And then later on say, actually, I don't really fancy that and change your mind. But, you know, that's the first thing I, I would like to say. You can do whatever you, you set your heart on. The second thing I would say to your girls are aim high, okay? Aim high. And also remember, it's not just about money. Uh, when I say aim high, it might be, you might say, right, I want to earn loads of money 
and then give it to the cat society or i want to earn loads of money and design a brand new doll or whatever um it doesn't matter it can be about money but I, what i mean by aim high is aim for something really high so you can reach it and so then be passionate about that when you're aiming high because the better you'll do or whatever you choose if you're really passionate about it and i'm passionate about the law you know i have another book coming out on the law i'm a bit of a geek like that but i'm a proud geek i don't care i wear my glasses with pride i love using the law in court i don't mind and i don't mind the word geek either if anyone wants to call me a geek they can so i would say aim high and be passionate and then the final thing i suppose i would say to your girls or the penultimate thing i've got one more is um work hard and be a role model yeah um work hard do your best that you can and remember to be a role model for others there'll be younger children in your school won't there who'll be looking up to you you won't realize and then suddenly you'll realize oh my goodness you've become a role model i mean look at you interviewing me now i often say no to lots of interviews and i've agreed to you guys you're already role models so um you know you can do whatever you set your heart on aim high work hard and be a role model and the final thing i'd like to say is um apart from having fun i said that didn't i because your well-being is really important so you always need to have a switch off and just have some fun with your families the final thing is that remember the school that you go to is a real privilege to be there and you've got privilege so use the privilege that you got and everyone's got privilege everyone's got privilege in some you know i'm not in a wheelchair and that's a privilege to me it means that when i go to get a train to london often to do a case i don't have to search for um a lift yeah to go in because i'm in a wheelchair and because i've got a disability so i'm a privilege as an able-bodied person and i've got that privilege you've got privilege because you go to a really good school i've seen the results i've seen the teaching you receive you do lots of great things so use the privilege that you've got from school or wherever you go beyond school in your lives to try and make a difference um with whoever with future people it might be climate change it doesn't matter but use your privilege um to make a difference and oh yes and have fun so that that was more than um i think that you want you wanted but I, I think it's really important and you're all great you know um and girls are great so we need some girl power and i really look forward to seeing the role models in the courtroom hey job where am i here look and if it's not then not but you can do whatever it could be right and so on is that okay where have you gone thank you so much for coming in virtually to speak to us today we are very inspired and we're sure that everyone else is too thank you oh thank you guys